Welcome to the U.S. Econograph, a new color-coded graphic model of the U.S. economy. It uses graphic shapes and colors to explain the major components and interactions of the economy from a unique graphic perspective. The household, in the center, works for the first firm shown by the brown arrow and receives income as the green wages arrow. The second firm supplies products shown by the blue arrow and receives payment as a green arrow by return. This indicates the household's dual function as part of the circular flow in the private sector. In these graphics, the private sector is displayed firstly in the elevation mode, where the white spaces indicate markets between different sectors of the economy. Below this, we can see the private sector in plan view, where the household sector is on the periphery, separated from the retail sector by the market conduit. In the center, the non-retail private sector is shown in a darker shade, indicating the main part of the private sector. In this illustration, we focus on the retail private sector and markets where the householder is shown shopping. The blue and green arrows represent the retail transactions. This continuous gap between households and firms is the retail market conduit, where transactions take place and economic flows circulate. These new graphics illustrate an enlarged view of the retail market for an Apple iPhone. The tan lines of the marketplace indicates that the households have consumer sovereignty of whether to buy or not. Supply is represented by the upward sloping turquoise line, and the intersection with the brown household demand line is the equilibrium or market price. It can be seen that at a price of $380, some 30 phones are sold. The Econograph highlights the labor markets in the non-retail private sector. An employee in the construction industry is shown with his market-driven wages packet, represented by the green arrow. The non-retail sector supplies goods and services to the retail sector, households, and interacts with the external economy. The white border around the dark blue area represents these non-retail markets and their transactions. These graphics illustrate the labor market for unskilled labor. The turquoise frame for the market shows that firms have significant influence over the market due to their ability to hire and fire employees. Here we focus on the supply and demand dynamics in this semi-skilled labor market, where a minimum hourly pay rate is represented by the dotted black line. The downward sloping turquoise demand curve and the upward sloping brown supply curve demonstrate that as market rates increase, household supply of labor rises, with more households entering the market. This aligns with the law of supply. The higher the rate of pay, the greater the amount of labor supplied. Here we enlarge the non-retail private sector to show the various types of industry and commerce within it. The services component is central because it underpins most commercial activities. Nearly all firms provide services to other firms and some to households, while many also receive services as part of their expenses. In the U.S. economy, this sector includes manufacturing, construction, finance, technology, healthcare, and professional services. The interconnectedness of these industries relies heavily on services like logistics, financial management, IT support, and consulting. This network of interactions boosts productivity and drives economic growth, highlighting the essential role of services at the core of the non-retail private sector. In this example, the Econograph shows the U.S. private sector in a trading format, importing foreign steel from overseas, and at the other end, subsidizing exports. The imported steel arrives by ship, as can be seen by the container ship and the animated mauve arrow, while payments for these imports are shown as the green arrow leaving the country. Next, we focus on the export interface, showing a digital consignment of artificial intelligence being digitally exported out of the U.S. Similarly, we see export payments or receipts coming into USA to join the main economic flows. These illustrations enlarge the lower interfaces into the imports and exports markets where supply and demand interact. In the imports market, Japanese steel supply is represented by the red color, while US demand is displayed as the blue lines. Equilibrium is determined by the prices and quantities at the intersection of supply and demand. It can be seen that the imposition of a 25% tariff on steel imports, as shown by the dotted red line, will increase the price of steel products in the U.S. and lower the quantity of steel demanded. 
We now enlarge the export interface to a blue framed market, indicating an overseas buyer's market with supply and red demand intersecting. U.S. supply of artificial intelligence is represented by the blue colors, while increased overseas demand for artificial intelligence is displayed as the red lines. In these graphics, the animated private sector is displayed with the two continuous marketplaces activated. This flow of funds around the private sector is interrupted at each corner interface. On the left-hand side, the mauve leakages to import payments and the gray leakages to taxation are displayed leaving the main flows. On the right-hand side, we see government expenditure and exports coming into the economy through their respective interfaces at the corners. These graphs show the two-tone public sector above the private sector, detailing the fiscal forecast of the U.S. federal budget. The taxation revenues are shown in gray on the left-hand side, with the Treasury in the center receiving these taxation revenues. Light brown expenditures are shown leaving the Treasury and traveling back to the private sector at the top right-hand interface. The forecast expenditure of $6.75 trillion exceeds taxation revenues of $4.92 trillion, creating a forecast deficit of $1.83 trillion for the 2024 to 2025 fiscal year. In these graphics, the Econograph displays the U.S. monetary economy in a static context, highlighting key financial flows and balances. The graphics illustrate three primary financial flows within the economy, capital inflows and outflows through the financial markets, new money entering the Treasury in exchange for newly issued bonds, bonds and money flowing between banks and financial markets. Additionally, the graphics present a balance sheet perspective, displaying public and private assets and liabilities. This is a graphic display of the accumulated assets and liabilities for the U.S. economy. In the center, the econograph displays the GDP shape with the rotating four-way representing the circular flow of the economy. On the left-hand side, in turquoise, the largest asset of $62.2 trillion is the combined stock market's capitalizations. These overlap the blue total property assets of $49.6 trillion, which are displayed in turquoise. Above this, the public sector assets are situated showing total public assets of $5.7 trillion, including gold and foreign exchange. The national debt or total bonds and securities on issue of $36.2 trillion, of which $7.6 trillion represents overseas owners, is displayed in pink on the right-hand side. On the lower right-hand side, Private mortgages of $17.0 trillion are displayed in beige, with credit card debt of $1.166 trillion underneath in the corner. In this illustration, we display the U.S. balance of payments, which includes the current account and capital account. It demonstrates how total capital inflows, green arrows, and outflows, mauve arrows, are required to balance each other to maintain foreign exchange reserves and currency stability. The U.S. Trade Deficit Overview Total exports for 2024 were 2.1 trillion and the main destination was Canada. Imports were 3.15 trillion dollars, largely from Canada, China, and Mexico. This left a current account deficit of 1.5 trillion dollars, which is 4.2% of GDP, up from 3.8% in Q2. This trade deficit was reduced by the surplus on capital account and US Federal Reserve monetary movements. Graham Edward Hull is a creative intellectual with long-standing commercial experience that has driven his diverse career. After graduating in economics from Macquarie University, Graham joined the Western Australian government where he created feasibility studies for various industries. Graham went on to manage and invest in several successful enterprises, showcasing his natural talent for business and originality. But it was later, through their office design and fit-out business, that Graham's passion for visual communication and design developed. Using PowerPoint, Graham developed what would eventually become the Econograph, a revolutionary graphical model of the market economy. Graham began further studies in accounting, international economics, and finance to deepen his understanding of the underlying commercial principles. Now, Graham submits the Econograph video for consideration and invites expressions of interest from the academic and business communities to take this revolutionary tool to the next level.